Did you know what you wash your clothes with, what you scrub your floors or your bathtub with can actually sabotage your hormones? Hey there, I'm Dr. Jolie Brighton and I'm doing an Instagram takeover. We are going to be talking all things hormones, but something very important for you to understand is that as women, we are exposed to so many chemicals every day known as endocrine disruptors. They literally mess with our hormones and not in a good way. And while you may be thinking, but I cleaned up my cosmetics and what I put on my face and in my hair and in my mouth, I've cleaned it all up. Have you asked the question of, what's in my environment because the reality is is that if you scrub your kitchen counters and then that's something that's an endocrine disruptor your food touches that or your hands touch that then your mouth touches that and it can cause big problems now don't freak out okay take a deep breath because i talk about all of this in my book beyond the pill which is a book aimed at providing root cause solutions for women's common hormonal issues beyond hormonal birth control. And I talk about some steps that you can take to start to optimize your environment so that you can love your hormones right. Now, whenever we talk about environmental toxins and how they impact our hormones, step one is always to remove the source. Now, we will get to that sexy stuff like liver detox and pooping, but you need to start to clean up the environment and re remove the sources of really insult to the body. And you're lucky to be here on Branch Basics channel because they've got a ton of really truly green cleaning products to help support your hormones and lower your toxic burden. Now stay with me because we're going to talk more about what does it look like to have a hormone imbalance and what you can do about it. Hormone imbalances can show up in a whole lot of ways, but by far one of the most common hormone imbalances that I see in my clinic is estrogen dominance. Hey there, I'm Dr. Jolene Brighton. You can follow me right there. And we're going to chat about hormone imbalance, specifically estrogen dominance and what you can do about it. Now, when it comes to estrogen dominance, there could be a few things that are contributing to this. One is you have way too much estrogen in the system as is. So maybe you're making too much or your fat cells are making too much or environmental toxins are contributing to excess estrogen levels. Now, environmental toxins aren't like your yummy, delicious, wonderful estrogen. No, no, no. It doesn't give you the benefits like protecting your brain, your bones, your heart, and giving you those voluptuous curves. But instead, environmental toxins can wreak havoc in all the wrong ways like estrogen out of control can do. Now, we can have too much estrogen in the system, or we can have an issue with not enough progesterone, what's called a relative estrogen dominant. So we don't have enough progesterone to challenge that big old diva that estrogen is. So that can be due to lack of ovulation. Sorry, look at this. There's a small human interrupting my videos. Small human, please leave the room now. You. Yes, you are interrupting. No, Anyhow, the, well then you're gonna have to teach about hormones. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so here's the deal. Maybe you don't have enough progesterone because you're not ovulating or you have nutrient depletions or maybe you're on hormonal birth control, which is suppressing ovulation altogether. And if that's the case, then you're going to have symptoms of estrogen dominance. Now, what does this actually look like? PMS, faux show. So you can have where you are waking up at night, the week or two before your period, feeling hot, sweaty, anxious, maybe you have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. Your periods are heavy, clotty, painful. You're noticing that your tissues swell. You're really irritable. Um, there's a lot of ways that estrogen dominance can show up, but really what we want to be looking at are, so what we want to be looking at are, what are your symptoms throughout your menstrual cycle and how are the weeks leading up to your period? That's the most common time for estrogen dominance to present itself. Now, what do we do about this? Okay, so to understand what to do about estrogen dominance, you have to understand how estrogen metabolism works in the body. So number one, it's up to your liver to package up all the estrogen that you do not need and put it into the right pathways. Now it is possible that you're putting estrogen into the wrong pathways. Your liver is everything when it comes to hormone health. That's why there's an entire chapter in my book dedicated to helping you understand how your liver processes your hormones and what you can do to make sure that your liver is on point. So here's the deal. You can have normal estrogen, but have abnormal metabolism. And that means that maybe you're not methylating it, that uses B vitamins and magnesium, or perhaps what you're doing is putting it into the wrong pathway so that you get these more potent estrogens that cause like your breasts to swell, your periods to become cloudy, and all kinds of trouble. So what can you do right now to love up your liver right and to get it on point so that your hormones are optimized? 
Number one is clean up your environment. Oh, you knew that was coming. So we've got to reduce the environmental burden on your liver so it can do its job right. Number two is to make sure that you feed your liver what it needs to do its job. Now, some very big areas that you need to focus on are B vitamins, so eating B vitamin rich foods and considering using a supplement, maybe a B complex, a multivitamin, or a prenatal. We also need amino acids. These are the building blocks of proteins in order to run our detox pathways. This is often overlooked in liver detoxification and without a complete array of amino acids in your diet, you stand zero chance in optimizing your hormones. Now, the third thing I would say is eat your broccoli, your kale, cruciferous vegetables of all kinds. And if you don't tolerate those well, consider broccoli sprouts. I've got a ton of recipes for you in my book to help you start eating a diet that is rich in nutrients to optimize hormone balance. Now, once you have magnesium citrate to help the bowels move and support your body by eating fiber rich foods. And if you want to next level this, make those fiber rich foods part of your seed cycling regimen. You don't know what seed cycling is? Girl, you need to be on the pill because that's some secret sauce to heal your hormones. So with estrogen dominance, I just want to recap. One is it's super common. Two is you got to clean up your environment, reduce the burden on your liver and eliminate xenoestrogens. Those We also need to support estrogen metabolism through the liver by eating our cruciferous vegetables, taking B complex, eating B vitamins, and making sure we're getting a wide array of amino acids in our diet so that we can support estrogen all the way through that pathway. And then of course, you need to poop every day. So eating fiber to support your microbiome and considering a supplement like my balance supplement, which has DIM in it that we find in those cruciferous vegetables, that's that secret active ingredient and getting some calcium deglucurate in. That way you can mitigate whatever those gut bugs may be doing with your estrogen and get the estrogen out of your system. So I hope this is helpful. I'd love to hear from you. What other questions do you have and how can I help support you when it comes to estrogen dominance? Bonus tip. Make sure that you're eating vitamin C rich foods. That way you can increase your progesterone levels and challenge that estrogen so that you don't end up with PMS symptoms.